this time, brothers and sisters, I've lived in this city when it was a town for 60 years, and I'm welcoming the next Prime Minister of Britain, Jeremy Corbyn! Thank you. Thank you very much for being here today. Thanks for coming along and thanks for the spirit of this meeting because at one level this is an election campaign for the leadership of the Labour Party but it's also about the kind of party we want and the kind of Britain we want and the kind of society we want in this country. That is what's bringing so many people together at the present time. This is the 19th leadership campaign event that I've done in the past two and a half weeks. And they've been massive, and they've been open air for the most part. And they've brought together people of all communities, all ethnic backgrounds, a very wide range of political ideas. But they brought people together on the basis that they're fed up with growing inequality in Britain. They're fed up with the levels of poverty that exist. They're fed up with the tax evasion of the richest and the biggest corporations in this country. And so it is about putting forward a political alternative. And whilst last year we fought the leadership campaign in order to try and change the direction of the Labour Party, we're fighting it this year to keep that direction of our party, but also to take the campaign outwards to win in every community all across Britain. A year ago, we were a party that had sadly been defeated in a general election. That general election result was a disaster for the people of this country because it brought back a Tory government committed to more cuts and more austerity. Within a month of the election, they introduced a welfare reform bill, so-called, which tried to take £12 billion out of the pockets of the poorest and most vulnerable within our community. Sadly, at that time, our party thought we should abstain on that bill because we couldn't oppose the Tories' welfare agenda. Well, I tell you this, things have changed. We are no longer accepting that agenda. We're no longer accepting the agenda of cuts in public expenditure paid for by the very poorest, whilst at the same time, as the Panama Papers showed, the richest and biggest corporations systematically, on an industrial scale, evade tax and set up brass plaque companies in tax havens around the world while our public services are underfunded. And when some of our media talk about tax efficiency and the way in which the wealthy can avoid taxes, I simply say this to those that think it's clever. One day, you're going to be old. One day, you might suffer a heart attack. One day, your house might catch fire. One day, you might suffer an attack in the street. On that day, you'll be glad. There are ambulance workers, there are firefighters, there are police officers, there are public service workers. because of the kind of society we want to live in. And then you have to look at the way in which young people are treated in our society. Apprentices, grotesquely underpaid, often treated as low-paid workers and not given the real training they should be given. Some apprenticeships are very, very good, some less so. Cannot we make it clear that we expect young workers to be properly treated, properly trained, fully qualified at the end of it, and paid a decent living wage for the work they do as trainees or apprenticeships. And for those that go on to college, go on to university, and sadly leave with massive debts, we've seen the effects of high fees and high